Hi, my name is John. I'm going to be demonstrating how to perform an O3 UV treatment. First, let's go ahead and, and look at the equipment that you'll need. Um, right here to my right is an infusion pump. Um, this is just standard. Um, you may have one in your practice already. Here below it we have the Chimp UV machine. This is our biophotonic device utilizing ultraviolet light energy. Um, you also need an ozone machine. Uh, we don't have one of those here to display right now, um, but that's another piece of equipment you will need. Now, the supplies that you'll need, right here in front of me I have a Chimp UV Quartz Cuvette. You'll need one of those. You can get those from us. Um, you can also get this bag from us. This is a special blood bag designed to do O3 UV treatments. So this is a 250 milliliter bag. There's also a 1500 milliliter bag for, for larger animals like horses. Um, you'll need a little saline. This is 0.9% sodium chloride. You'll need something of that nature. Um, you also need a butterfly needle, uh, 23 gauge, 25 gauge, uh, depending on what your preference is there. Um, an 18 gauge hypodermic needle will be necessary. Some gauge isn't important on that one, uh, but that's a good size. A couple syringes, uh, one for ozone, one for drawing blood and uh, mixing it with your saline. And then an anticoagulant is, is helpful. Um, you may or may not choose to use that. Uh, this is heparin. Uh, you can use whatever you uh, prefer. Um, and this is a, an insulin syringe that we use to drop the heparin with uh, bef before we insert that into the, the, syringe, the larger syringe. This is just a plastic hemostat. That's also helpful if, if you have that. Um, so those are the products that you will need to, to do a therapy. Uh, let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to hang my O3 Vets blood bag up here on our IV pole. And then next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these syringes and connect the hypodermic needle to it. I would at this point like to mention that something about dosage. Um, we're going to be treating a 50 pound dog today. Uh, that means that we're going to draw between 5 and 10 cc's of blood um, from that dog. So basically how we gauge that is that for every 10 pounds of, of animal weight um, you're going to draw between 1 and 2 cc's of blood. Um, if you can get two cc's per 10 pounds, that's better. If we can only get one cc, um, then it's sufficient. Uh, but we like to get that 20% blood, 80% saline ratio if we can. Now, uh, we will be mixing the blood with saline, so that's important to remember that ratio. Um, we dilute the blood in saline, about again 20% blood, 80% saline, down to as low as 10% blood, 90% saline will still give us a good treatment. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go through this um, protocol. So I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, cap off my needle. I am going to draw up and for ease of doing that I'll just hang my bag here. Um, I'm going to draw up about 40 cc's of saline because again I want about 80% saline and 20% blood. Once I've got my 40 cc's of saline in here, I'll go ahead and remove that. Uh, I won't need any more saline. I can, I can set that off to the side. And then at this point, um, I'll cap my needle. And I'm actually, you can do it one of two ways. You can use it a new syringe to withdraw the blood or you can use the same syringe that you have the saline in and just draw the blood from the patient into that syringe uh, depending on how you want to do that. So I'm going to use the same syringe. I'm going to add a little bit of heparin. So to do that I'm going to take my heparin, I'm going to take my insulin syringe and I'm just going to draw out about 500 units of heparin. So depending on the concentration that you have, um, that will change how much you actually draw out um, volume wise. I'm going to take that heparin actually and uh, just go ahead and insert it into my syringe that I'm going to use for withdrawing the blood. 
So I have got my heparin and my saline in this syringe here. I can cap my needle and set that aside. I'm done with that. And then I'm going to take this syringe and take my butterfly needle and go to the patient and draw the blood. We've got our blood, our saline, and our heparin uh, mixed up in this syringe here. So I'm going to take that mixture and I am going to put that into the O3 Vets bag. So I've got a, a needle port here, right in the middle. I'm just going to slowly inject that into the bag. Don't want to go too quickly. I don't want any hemolysis. So we'll fill that bag. Um, and then once we're done doing that, now there's there's two options here. I can either inject my ozone um, at this point before I treat it biophotonically with the light, UV light, or I can wait until after it's been treated with um, the light and then I can uh, inject the ozone at that point. Um, I'm going to choose to treat it after it's been uh, treated biophotonically. I'm going to choose to inject my, my ozone at that point. So, okay, I've got my uh, blood saline heparin mix up into that bag. And again, you can use whatever anticoagulant you choose. Um, so that's all set. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to simply clamp off on this line here, remove the cap, and I'm going to connect my quartz cuvette to that line. Once I've done that, this is an important part. Now, if, if when I remove this clamp, the, uh, the blood doesn't for some reason go down and fill up the cuvette, I can connect my syringe to the other side and just draw it draw it through a little bit and that'll get it started. Um, but another thing, when we prime this tubing, when we fill this tubing up, we want to hold the cuvette upright. Okay, so don't hold it like that, don't hold it down like that. You want it actually to be upright um, when it fills so that we get all the air bubbles out of there. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove the clamp and as you see it might have to take this cap off and then it might fill for us here. Yep. Um, I'm going to let it go ahead and fill all the way up through and then I will put my cap back on. At that point I can actually insert it now into the uh, infusion pump here. And once that line is inserted into there, just close my door. Um, and I uh, can also get my machine opened up here and I'm going to insert my cuvette. Now there's some uh, um, flexible plastic tubing and that's what goes into the uh, lid, into the prongs in the lid, um, like that. I can go ahead and shut that, turn my sh machine on. Now I will take the cap off of this bag up here and go ahead and crimp this so I don't get any blood flowing when I don't want it to. I'll just connect these. Okay, now I'm all set. I can, I've already set the infusion pump for the correct amount of time. Now on the pump we have to set both how much fluid is being treated and the speed at which we want it to flow. So I've already set those. Um, they're all ready. I'm just going to press start. Begins. And that begins our process of infusion. Um, so our, our fluid is being pumped now through the system back up into the bag and it'll actually come up here into this uh, this tubing through the top and then trickle on down and we've designed it specially that way so that we can make sure and get an even consistent treatment over the process of um, however many minutes it takes. Now this one is going to only take us nine minutes so it's not doesn't take too long during this time obviously the uh, um, technician or the doctor can be doing something else while it's being treated. Um, so we'll come right. back when well, this is done. We are done treating our volume of fluid now um, so we can shut our machine off. 
Um, I've got our ozone drawn up. So we have 10 cc's of uh, 20 micrograms per milliliter concentration of ozone. Um, and I'm going to remove my cap and simply inject that as well into our bag here. Um, and that's it. That. You don't have to worry about there's ideas out there that ozone bubbling through um, blood can cause hemolysis, etc. Um, that's not the case. So there's been studies that have shown that that, that doesn't hurt anything um, to bubble our ozone through the blood. So I'm just going to mix it up a little bit, make sure I've got all of that. As soon as ozone touches uh, blood, it's going to be absorbed but uh, it's possible that some of those air bubbles um, shot up through that and some of it escaped into the top. So I'm just going to mix it up a little bit here um, just to make sure everything's uh, thoroughly mixed and I'll hang it back up. Um, we can then take it out of our infusion pump and also remove it from our biophotonic device. We're done with those now and uh, here we've got all of our treated fluid. Um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my hemostat and I'm going to clamp off here and then I am going to go ahead and take my syringe and in fact I'm just going to crimp this with my fingers and remove this side of the cuvette, connect my syringe to that. And now I'm going to go ahead and draw up the blood out of the bag, out of the cuvette line, and into my syringe. Once I've done that, I'm done with these uh, blood products, so those can be disposed of properly. And I've got my uh, got my blood um, that's been treated with UV light, and it's also been treated with ozone. Uh, this is what they call a major autohemotherapy, um, along with biophotonic therapy, which we call O3 UV. Um, so that's your O3 UV treatment. You can now connect your butterflies. Uh, needle um, to the uh, syringe here as soon as you're ready to reinfuse this into the patient and that's it.